Uh oh, we're live. We're live. Bam. Just like what? that. Hang on a Not second. Like wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hang on. Gentlemen. That was very exciting. <laughs> that was very, very exciting. Brought to you by Advil? What? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, dudes? Are hey. You are you taking hey, Advil for something? Tube Top Tuesday? By chance? Tube Top tube Tuesday. Top. It's that pretty was, warm uh, out here. I could be wearing oh, my Tube Top. I bet, yeah. How hot is it here, Fitzy? I haven't even looked yet today. I haven't been outside today. Trust vampires. We I don't know. go outside, Todd. Not during the day. I know. <laughs> not during I know the day. Not. Even at night, it's too hot. I can't right? imagine. Too yeah, hot. It's so hot. I'm drinking iced coffee. Usually, I drink hot coffee, but it too, is too hot. Too it's hot too in hot. Vegas. <laughs> you yeah, guys, there up you here. go. What's going on? You know, we're inviting you to Vegas. Come out in a couple of weeks. We are. We are. Out. We're coming no. out for a couple couple days. Something. We're gonna shoot a video, aren't we? It's only mm -hmm. 100 degrees in Vegas. It says it's, we'll get some cool uh, B-roll stuff on the way out. Maybe some mountain. there you go. Some good desert desert be real. Yeah. Feel like in loathing style. Yeah, you guys like be throwing that. And... What's that hike, Corey? The big mountain there. It's like four, isn't it like well, Mount miles? Mount Charleston? You've climbed it, right? Yes. Twice, yeah. It's uh sure. over twelve K. You guys gonna climb it, it in 115? I, I can't wait <laughs> no, to see no, this. No, no, that's the thing It'll about it. Cool. Actually, if you've never been up there, you can escape oh, the heat. It's it's true, way up yeah. high. It'll yeah. be like 73 degrees up there. Perfect. What's, that's what's right. the base elevation? <laughs> Not to get too geeky on you. Base but. elevation? Oh, it's pretty, you know, 5,000 maybe. Okay, so it's cooler. Like Why are we 20. talking about weather? <laughs> we always talk about weather. <laughs> well, let's go climb the mountain and shoot the video on top of the mountain. Oh, yeah, we're there's, talking there's, about weather, like what was, with the wind blowing and the. <laughs> I and, thought you and, went climbing yesterday, Corey. I yes, did. I, I went on a ten mile hike Oy. to the bridge to nowhere. Is Anybody that heard of that? No. Where, where is that? So that's close it's to Mount nowhere. Baldy, and it's basically you you hike for five miles through wilderness, and then all of a sudden you get to this bridge this architectural bridge that has arches and it looks like a proper like engineered bridge for cool. cars, but there's no roads on either side of it. It's the strangest yeah. thing. And, and is now there, is there that? an explanation for why or yeah, what there, or there is? And you know what? I meant to look it up, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we can all look it up on our own <laughs> later on. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not sure, but I, I meant to look it up because um, I'm interested to know why this damn bridge is just in the middle of nowhere, bridging this this gorge, and there's just no road going to it. It's just a hiking trail. Well, you could thing. walk across it, I guess, huh? Yep. Yeah, you can go yeah. underneath it, but we ran out of the time, so we couldn't go underneath it. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I did that yesterday, and I'm feeling a little stiff today, but how about you guys? You have a much more interesting week than I have. I can't even remember what the hell I've done this week. Well, I pretty much we're just sitting here waiting to do to do two talk. Of course, like poison always. <laughs> Did you get any poison oak? There's a lot up there, huh? There wasn't that much, but there was a little bit, and I know what it looks like to stay away from it because I've been affected by it, and I don't want that to oh, happen really? again. Oh really? Yeah. Oh boy, what's that like? I've never been near. So I've always before. I've always known what it looks like, right? So I've always stayed away from it, but my dogs didn't stay away from it, and I didn't see uh... them going through it. And we, we went kind of like off trail mm -hmm. and they had gone through some of it and we had to go over this kind of wash, this kind of waterfall was dry, um, but I had to carry them. And so I, I think I had to like a, a tank top or something, but anyway, I, so I grabbed them under my arm, I think it was Yoda and uh, it got all over my uh, inside of my bicep and on kind of the side of my body. Oh boy. And, and I didn't, I, it could, took me a while to put it together, but it, it was itchy for, and pussing and everything for like a month. And Shane, Shane's had it really bad before too. 
Oh, really? I had it, I had it on tour. I, I picked it up. I was I was home like a break. We had a ten day break. Came home, was hiking. Got got something. I didn't really even know. And then went back to Japan, and it just turned into this like huge like pus and like it looks oh. like zits if you've ever had like massive zits all over my okay. inside of my arm and up my arm it was a month finally i was like i went to the doctor and got you have to take a steroid like once you're that allergic really? to it, you have a you're, you you get about three exposures before you'll break out and then you know the first time you'll get it mild and then you'll get it gnarly and then now if i just look at it i get it so i gotta be careful but basically the only way to get rid of it is a steroid Mother Nature is a mad scientist, isn't she? It really is, yeah. You're just and it's like, a pretty plant. Like, you see it. Yeah. I remember I used to, like, I think the first time I went, or one of the first times I was talking about poison oak with Corey, didn't I actually make you touch it? Or yeah, because you, you said you were immune to it. <laughs> <laughs> Long story short, false. <laughs> yeah no that didn't work at all it uh, you're never immune to it i mean i don't know anybody is oh, but yeah. you guys are good though if you haven't had it you probably got a couple exposures probably not much luck of it there's none in my house so i'll probably be fine <laughs> it's just, i don't think it's anywhere out in the desert it's, it's yeah. usually around water like areas yeah. where there's water yeah yeah i suppose so yeah yeah all right well uh, we're, we're missing it, darren like today this. we have no darren yeah. as you can notice that He's he's enjoying as he should the summers in Winnipeg because soon enough he'll be locked indoors, for the opposite reason that we're locked indoors. Yes, because of the cold in Winnipeg. Yeah, yep. poor guy. But uh, yeah, I have, I have no sympathy for him. He's probably on a hammock right now, enjoying a beer or doing whatever Darren's do. He deserves it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just looking at our feed. I'm saying hi to a couple of buddies I haven't seen him yeah. forever. Here, Brian Feldman is on. Oh my goodness! I haven't seen anybody Kim yet. Grayson, Sharon, oh, wow, um, Megan from Winnipeg is on. Gloria from Medicine Hat is on. I'm looking on the feed here. Oh, oh dude, you know what we should do? We should do romp room DeVito. every week. Every week we should do romp <laughs> room. Where we're like, and I see Karen. I see Susie. I see Pam. I love and, it. And then leave some people out, right? Because that was a uh, that was a Canadian thing too. Romper room. Totally. Yeah. And did you always wait at the end to hear your name? Yeah, they never, they never ever said my name. Yeah, Hello. they didn't say Todd. I don't think so. Wow. They did say Jackass once, and I assume they meant me. <laughs> <laughs> I see Jackass. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah. That's when they lost their license right there. <laughs> CBC was like, "You're out. You're gone." Totally. Speaking of that, and we. That link you sent just before we got on here today with uh, Bob and Doug hosting or doing a little segment on the Juno Awards. Yeah. In 1982. That was Check it out, you guys. Google that on YouTube, but it it just brought back a lot of memories. Because Saga won Best New Group or something, which was, the, I was like, damn, damn, this is, that's how old this is. Yeah. Uh, promising yeah. group. Most promising group. That's what they call it. <laughs> Hey, and yeah. we always got it. Would say, never Canada would never commit to best. It's just most promising. Right. It's, it's, yeah. it's, they're not going to get too ahead of themselves. Yeah. I think we should always mention because people go took toke talk we like. What's up with the name? Look, if you're watching yeah. and you need to know, it came from Bob and Doug McKenzie. Totally. Right, guys. Totally. So I mean, they, the album they that came out back it, yeah. in the day, yeah. the spelling on the album of a took was spelled T O Q U E, and mm -hmm. we've committed to that ever since. So exactly. That's right. Yeah. Several exactly. spellings. That's the one we're going with, the Bob and Doug McKenzie version. That was yeah, certainly yeah. the popularized one. That that record, they put out a record that did well in the States as well. The um, Bob and Doug McKenzie record, I guess, Great Way North, whatever the hell it was called. Mm -hmm. The there song was Getty song Lee written and all by? That. I don't know who it was written by. Who was yeah, written who wrote by? It? Okay, so Dave Thomas, who was Ian Doug. Thomas. Right, Ian Thomas wrote it. Yeah. Ian Thomas. Ian Is yeah. that right? And hmm. so, as sung by Getty Lee. They had Getty Lee sing the chorus in that song from Rush. Right. Oh, I speak off. Which, I bought one of these this week. He got paid he, 10 bucks. The 10 Getty Lee bucks sang. Oh, yeah, yeah. 10 bucks. Have which you tried it, Todd? In, comes in Robin's Egg Blue or perhaps oh. Tiffany. You know, I haven't had a chance to do anything with it because I've been so like, we were in the middle there, of home renovations. My, reservations. My buddy Barry Sparks had that in the rack mount. He had it on tour. With yeah, him, so there's the, like, yeah. Yeah. That. I think, and then into the SBT, I want to mm -hmm. say, probably, yeah. yeah. Sounded pretty Getty-ish. I bet, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. 
I'm actually, well, you know, I'm always can... tampering with these things. So luckily the guys at Tech 21 are really cool to me. So uh, I'm going to plug that one in. The Doug Pinnock one, the guy from, you know, Doug from uh, King's King X, X, his box is really cool. But suddenly it's a gear, gear talk show. Hey, listen. <laughs> anyway, we got a guest. We should probably get to it. Yeah. First, we got to say, and I see Megan. Hi, Megan. <laughs> yes, I do see Megan. There she is. Yep. It's the first time she ever heard her name. Ah, oh, that's adorable. It looks oh. like she's going to the Kiss Cruise. I think she. Oh, I she hope is. she is. Yeah. Like yeah. Surface. Look at her yeah. her profile picture there. You can see Kiss yeah. Cruise. She was. Hey, uh, you know uh, what? Two got invited on the Kiss Cruise, but we're we we're did. extremely busy. So at least we got offered. At least we got. Oh, invited. okay. Well, there you go. Speaking yeah. of Kiss, I think I saw. Was there a New York show recently? Yeah, they did. Kind a of socially distant Becca show. Yeah. Pseudo, was that what it was? Yeah. I mean, it looked amazing. But you know there wasn't many people there. They, you know, they too. The grandiose production. They finished the tune. It was just like <laughs> yeah. probably probably in front of like film executive people or something. I'm not sure if it was like open to the fans. I think it had to be controlled. So maybe that's why. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was yeah. a huge stage. It was like a stadium freaking production. As always. Yeah. Yeah, they don't, don't do it small. That's style. for sure. Yeah. They were all singing. Sounded they sounded great. Blondie played that thing too because it was a Tribeca mm. something or other going on out there. Blondie sounded great. <clears throat> yeah. So there we are. Well, let's get to it. <laughs> Take off, Troy says. Take off, eh? Take they, off. Said, they said name the next Hoser. next Tuke album Hoser. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like it. Done. Actually, that's a good name for a band, Hoser. It would be, yeah. <laughs> like kind of like Weezer, Hoser. Like Weezer, yeah, I'd be like the Canadian version. The yeah. four guys on the front just standing there. <laughs> in lumberjack jackets. Yeah. <laughs> the Alberta dinner jacket. Holding a That's fish right. from Northern yeah. Pike. <laughs> a exactly. Northern Pike. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so let's bring on our, on our guest, right? Yeah, yep. yeah, please. Saskatchewan um, guys do the honors because Yes, well, let's let's do here. it together. Okay, Actually, go for it. We should start the introduction with a story of how I met Donnie the first time. Okay. You, you remember that? And I was with Brent and we were in Regina. The, the Juno awards were in Regina. We didn't have tickets and we were trying to get into the, uh, the big show at the Agrodome. And you know, Brent knows everybody, right? So Brent's like, I don't even know how we ended up there, but, Next thing we know, you probably take it from here because we were in a limousine with Kenny Shields and Donnie, right? What's there's nothing unusual about that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the most <laughs> Saskatchewan. We didn't have royalty. tickets. We didn't need tickets, but we figured it out. But why were we in Regina? We did we do a Tuke gig? I, that I don't remember, Corey. I don't know. It doesn't we matter. Must, we must have been doing a two gig. You guys are just kind of, you know, like, or, I think that's when you guys got those hall passes from your wives and you said, hey, Regina, <laughs> that's the place to go. You could have a hall pass. You could have a hall pass, but you're going to Regina. That's, that's, that's the catch. <laughs> anyway, okay, Corey, continue. <laughs> um, but I don't, I can't remember how we got in the limousine to begin with. Do you remember? No. Well, I'm just standing on the side of the road. Because I like, know Kenny. So, um, so yeah, we just we made right. uh, we made ourselves like look like we belonged. Yeah, part of the entourage. Uh, exactly. And 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 then you you were texting with with Kenny or something, and we ended up. He's like, you know, you guys should come on with us. And we're like, we we don't have tickets. And, and he said, well, just come come in my limo. No one's gonna know the difference. So we get in there with Donnie and Kenny, and no tickets, and they just. We just walked in like we were somebody and it totally worked. <laughs> and we're talking, I think we ended up on the red carpet and doing photos and like the whole deal. Amazing. <laughs> right. What year was that? Was um, 13, 12, 13, something like that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's a while ago now. So that was our uh, awesome first meeting with, uh, with Donnie. And I guess none of us had met previously because Donnie's been across the country for years as we all have in Canada. But, uh, but him and and Kenny, as really good friends, were there together at the Junos. So, mm -hmm. and they um, became good friends because of Tell a Miracle. Donnie's, he's a common uh, guest on Tell a Miracle, and apparently he co-wrote the theme the song. song. Yeah, saw that for yes. that Tell a Miracle uses. So crazy. Um, 
Yeah, and so miracle. <laughs> Streetheart played Tell a Miracle, and that's how Donnie, and, you know, we'll get this all from him. And the last gig Took played Tell a Miracle, 2020. That's yeah. that's absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Now, but Donnie you kids is- have a history, real, real quick. You guys, as Saskatchewanites, have, like, this is a big deal. Tell a Miracle is not just to anyone watching. Like, what is it? Well, it's a huge thing, right? It's a telethon yeah. uh, raising money for sick people and, and all that. And last year we raised... I want to think it was it was an astronomical number. Remember, it was like I'm not hundreds, even retaining million. hundreds yeah, of millions. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was like it was yeah. nuts. So I was like, wow, we raised millions of dollars. That's uh, not we. I mean, collectively, everybody raised millions of dollars. It was like, wow, I I was very very impressed that they that they can raise that kind of cash. It's a pretty important thing, and it's a big deal yeah. in Saskatchewan where we grew mm -hmm. up, where Corey and I grew yeah, up. Yeah, it's as big for us as as the Jerry Lewis telethon was for Absolutely. America. You know, yeah, yeah. it was mm -hmm. it was pretty cool to see how well organized it the whole thing was i mean yeah. how many bands or entertainers it was like Tons. literally hundreds and hundreds of them and it's <laughs> 24 hours so it's just kind of like yeah it's always something happening yeah and Mega Regina. From Regina, yes they say how Regina without a tone of irony or snicker <laughs> Can, can you sing the Regina song i just have to hear it one time to Regina, get it experience Regina. Oh, yeah. Experience, Regina. <laughs> yeah, experience. Yeah. There's a bass line that's quite awesome too. Yeah, yeah. It has the like the Seinfeld theme bass kind of tone I, going. I'd never heard it, but the last time we did that, tell a miracle thing. I, you heard it a lot. <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, it is the best song I ever heard in my life. And now it's like ingrained in me forever. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's nuts. But anyway, anyway sorry, continue. Yeah. Continue. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, oh, you're actually technically doing stuff? I want to hear that song. Well, anyway, our guest... Hang on, hang on, hang on. ...is the very hang successful... On. Oh, hang on. Okay, we're going to start with oh, this. Okay, oh, awesome. Okay. Get, Get that bass line going. Here we get shut down. We can't hear, can't it. hear it. Okay. Oh, no. wait. I know why. Hang on. Hang on. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, okay. This is a... This is... I don't want to... I don't want to oversell this, but this is probably the best song you'll ever hear in your life. Oh, there it is. There's <laughs> like half a million views okay. on it. Half Better rewind. Wow. Better rewind. Can you rewind it? How did we do that, Corey? <laughs> I like to side things. Christianity's biggest problem. That's what's uh, attached to the Experience Regina song. <laughs> yeah, <that is. laughs> uh, there it is. Uh, it's a real shame you're it's missing like... the song. But uh, what you should do is is go on YouTube after this and find Experience Regina. You get it, Corey? Because yeah. I'll get it. <laughs> Sorry, I got to say. <laughs> all right you get the gist of it yeah exactly yeah. and it was it's, just uh, made like created last year right no no it's been around for quite a yeah it's been around you better tell donnie to redo if he did tell a miracle he better redo the experience regina theme dude totally. time. well for totally. the longest time we were all confused is it set up as a parody is it a real thing because it's sort of it's presented it's presented as a like uh, like as if it was the uh, Saskatchewan like tourism board put it together or something like that. So it's, which makes it all the more funny, I think. <laughs> Just play that. Okay. That's it. That's pretty Beautiful. much the, song. It's the best. See, and that's the, the, only the joke about Regina is Regina is a place everybody's been through at least once in their life. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right on. Okay. Anyway, back to our intro. Yeah. Let's yes. get going here. <clears throat> yeah. So Donnie, Donnie is a fiddle player extraordinaire. Um, anybody in Saskatchewan and Canada knows who Donnie is as a fiddle player. Um, he played with Neil McCoy, who is an American country artist, for many, many years. Uh, Donnie has won so many awards. He there's like a year. There's never a year when he isn't winning an award. He's even won a uh, humanitarian award. I think he's done some stuff for anti-bullying, and um, yeah, wow. uh, which is amazing. We're going to talk about that a little bit too, and we're going to watch his video that he did with, uh, mm -hmm. with Kenny. Uh, and everybody knows that Kenny was the lead singer for Streetheart. Passed away a few years ago. We've covered so, several of their songs. Yeah, on our records. Yeah, Donnie is a world class talent, and we're so yes. happy to have him on Tuk Talk. Please welcome to Tuk Talk at Tuesday at two. It's 
Donnie Parento. Yo, yo, yo. How you doing, guys? Hi, Donnie. Did we, did we Donnie. exhaust you with that preamble we were doing? <laughs> 20 minutes. You know what I'm waiting for is I'm waiting for Climax Saskatchewan to actually get a hold of me to write a theme song for that. <laughs> I'm you too, guys, man. I got the hook in my head. Like, oh, dude. It's just going to open right up. <laughs> you've got you've got you've got climax in your head wait a minute what <laughs> hey, some of, you I say there's some of the best names in saskatchewan elbow elbow is a, is a town elbow is really? saskatchewan. It's yeah 100 yeah big beaver yeah there's some great ones out no there. yeah there's really? big beaver yeah. yeah big beaver saskatchewan yeah come on what so i'll start with the first question donnie you know we might have to stretch this out two three hours at this point but you know, we're going to allow that because you're going to have a few guys to, to join in you. Why is Saskatchewan the best province in Canada? Go. Saskatchewan is the best province. <laughs> <laughs> it's because there's three of us from Saskatchewan on here. We, are a, uh, we are a very humble province. I exactly. Say. So we won't even, we couldn't, we we're couldn't claim province. being best. We'll take a bow on that one. Yeah, exactly. We'll take a knee. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll say knee. most promising province, just most like that. <laughs> <laughs> One's going to be opening up because as of July 11th, we're officially opening back up. Uh, hopefully, everything's oh, good. 100%. And nice. we're away with the masks. And yeah. Where are you currently? Are you are you in Prince Albert? Albert. Yeah, Prince Albert. You're I was born and raised here in Prince Albert. And that's where I moved back to after I retired from Neil McCoy and came back home and started my music career here as a solo artist. That's so yep. cool. I mean, I, I find it really a really kind of romantic notion to go back to where you kind of grew up and where you kind of put your roots down. I think that's really cool that you did that. Well, you know, Todd, I went through a divorce and I had no money and the only one left that would take me in is my mom. So, <laughs> <laughs> I love you more than a 35 year old kid being welcomed back to mom with open arms. <laughs> Amazing. Good old mom. Hey. Yeah, if if mine partner. would have me, I'd probably be there right now. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely. Now, were you, did you live in the States at all during that time? Or? I did. I, I lived in the States for almost 12 years. Where? In Nashville? I, in, in Nashville. I lived in Nashville. I lived in Texas, San Angelo, Texas, Longview, Texas, uh, wow. Knoxville, Tennessee, Nashville, and ended wow. up in Salem, New Hampshire. And I was wow. at Salem, New Hampshire, which is 30 minutes north of Boston. And when 9-11 happened, I was literally, those people would have drove right by the highway about three blocks away from the mm -hmm. interstate from where I was living when they drove Whoa. in from Austin to take over the planes. Holy. That was a scary, very scary time. Yikes. And That's I actually serious. had a ticket booked for the next day on the 12th of September to fly. Oh, man. You did. To record my first fiddle album, finish up, finish up the touches on it. And I didn't know what was going to happen. I was just scared to death. And... Neil had called us all up and said, okay, we're, we're going to keep playing on the weekend. A lot of people canceled their shows. He chose not to. And okay. that was you know, a, a little bit of a disappointment for me because I wish we would have canceled, but more, more so I was just scared to death to get on a plane. Yeah. And, right. Just getting on that airplane. Like you just, I white knuckled the entire way all to Nashville. I couldn't wait to get off the plane. And then once we got through that, our whole world changed. And that's yeah. what we tell people today. I remember when nine 11 hit, change the entire way we fly all over the world now absolutely pandemic, what's going to happen is going to change the way we live for the rest of our lives mm -hmm. mm -hmm. agreed you would hope so i mean the world is opening up down here and i'm not sure anybody's retaining much of anything frankly <laughs> it's kind of yeah, like oh well you know business i mean it's going to change many things you know in the way we you know there's been a lot of times i've shaken a sweaty palm and thought to myself I'm catching something right now, aren't I? Even pre, you know, pre yeah. all this stuff. You're like, what is this person been up to that I'm shaking their hand? Oh, boy. You know, the thing, Todd, even watching hockey games in Vegas and seeing 18,000 people come out to watch the hockey game. I can't imagine what it's like for the sports players when you're playing in front of a live crowd. Like, well, like musicians. Playing yeah. a live crowd or go shoot a video and try and be enthusiastic. When totally. You, you're not getting any applause. It's crazy. Totally. That's what's going to be interesting when it's got to be so weird for like Montreal to come down here because in Montreal, there's like, what is it like 3,500, 5,000 people or something? 3,500. And then a lot of them wait outside and they watch it on a big jumbotron. And, yeah. and then they, then those guys come down here and it's nuts in Vegas. Um, so it's got to be markedly different to, to play under those circumstances. French Canadians in Vegas, who would have thought? Yeah. yeah. Hey, Cirque du Soleil. There's seven shows in this town. Well, currently yeah. they're all kind of closed, but That's there's a true. lot of French Canadians in this town. Actually. And That's Celine true. Dion when she's here too. Yeah. 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 The greatest singer. 
Yep. Exactly. <laughs> the greatest well, and Corey, you're in Vegas with Shania. So yep. even though that's not the French community, but <clears throat> still a, a big Canadian. Well, she, I mean, she speaks French half the day. Is that um, right? Yeah. Was she married a, a Swiss man and he's right. Yeah. Yes, of course. So was she, was she, that. she was bilingual back there in Ontario. Like she always kind of, um, a little bit. Uh, she, she, uh, before she met much, she was going out, she was actually engaged to, um, sort of a French Canadian, uh, guy who, the, his whole family spoke French. So I think she was doing a little bit, but when she moved out to Switzerland, then it was like full on. Mm, you right. know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I speak. M Métis is my heritage and that's French and, uh, yeah. and Cree. The, there's, there's native. And, and the, uh, the thing is my ancestry goes all the way back to Batoche, which is Louis Riel. Mm, yeah. What they did was they, they left Red River in Manitoba and they come <clears> on Métis Red River carts and they traveled all the way, and some ended up in Batash. Some some settled along the way, and some just decided to stay there. Hmm. But what happened when they ended up in Batash? They were settling, and the land that they were given was was really really good land because that's what they needed to farm and to just to stay alive was right mm -hmm. by the water. So apparently, what had happened was the government came back and said, "No, we don't want you having that land. You have to move inland now, away from the river." And they were giving them basically crappy land. And mm. Gabriel and Gabriel Dumont, Gabriel Dumont was more of the fighter and says, mm. no, we're going to fight this. So mm. my ancestors, the Perantos, were actually fought next to Louis Riel when the RCMP came and the Re Northwest Rebellion happened. And wow. They, they put up one hell of a fight and unfortunately lost, mm. but uh, Louis <laughs> Riel was uh, hung for treason for that. Oh, my that's God. Right. And then, that's, yeah. That's, so that's my Is answer. Toronto, would that be a French sort of, like, you it, it, it is a Canadian name, you know, uh, Brent, when, when I went to Paris, France, I played a show there in 2012, and they had said Peronto is not a very popular name here. But mm -hmm. they explained to me what is, is Perant. Oh, okay. So P-A-R-T. Uh -huh. And they said what happened during the French Revolution, people would leave France and go to other countries just to get out of there. But when they left, they weren't allowed to keep their surname. Oh, they had to change oh. it and add something. That's why oh, you wow. get of the names like Peronto, Thibodeau, they they would always add those little extras at the end because they <coughs> came to the country and came here. Wow, they it's hockey names too, too, right? Bernie Perrant. Bernie, Bernie Perrant. Remember the hockey player Bernie Perrant? And I was yeah, I, I think there's a Stefan Thibodeau maybe or I could be wrong, but that sounds very hockey name. <laughs> Do you know what Peronto means? I actually I don't. You know, and then and that's that's the one thing. When I went over there, the only thing that I remember saying in French was I had someone actually teach me how to say this in French. Uh, I don't speak French, but I hope my music speaks for me and you enjoy the show. Wow. Oh, over, over, and over and over again in my head. And when I got there, before I walked on stage, I said it to the guy and he said, that's it. Go say just that. Yeah. Great. Like, that's want to great. Get up there and say something bad. No. Because I... <laughs> <laughs> if it was one of my cousins, he would have taught me the wrong thing to say, probably. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. All the curse words. That's yeah. usually the first thing we yeah. learn. Yeah. You know, it was probably said a lot in Montreal Sunday night after the night's one was Double neck. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> two to I'm just saying. I'm sure that was the most used word on Sunday. It, it, is the series tied two to two now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And th now they come back to Vegas? Tonight. Ah. It's After I leave you, gentlemen, I am going to the game. I got in. Uh, hey, I, I have no, like, it's you can't get a ticket in this town to go to these no. games, right? Because it's sold out. <laughs> No, but you know what his in is? He's going to get in Donnie's uh, limo and go to the hockey game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm definitely, uh, it's not my ticket. Someone else was, you know, lucky enough not going to the game and I'm able to jump in. But I, there's no way you can get a ticket in this town. It's insane. Oh, I, I will say, you know, the, the, the Canadians are giving them a lot more trouble than I expected because everybody was very, I'm in Vegas. So it's, everybody's like, oh, this is going to be a breeze. And I'm like, yeah. okay, well. And now I'm like, no. it's two to two. Here we go. Let's see. Yeah. They're, they're There's a few players on the Canadians roster that have won Stanley Cups. And that's true. They're the veteran sure. players. So if they mm -hmm. know how to win playoff games, it's going to mm -hmm. come from there. That's true. You know, yeah. Shea yeah. Weber and Toffoli and Perry. Yeah. Corey Perry. Corey Perry. It's yeah, nice to see an original six team in the, in the, in the running. It's to it be honest, cool. it's getting more and more rare. These, these, mm -hmm. as the years go by. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 
Now we got the one of the original 56 teams going or whatever it is now. I have. <laughs> How many teams is the Knights? I'm trying to think what number is the Knights team. That would be I don't even know. Well, it's in the 30s, I think. But the, hey, yeah, we, I'm trying to remember. You know what's cool is next year we get a new team as well with the the Seattle Kraken. Seattle, it's gonna That's be awesome. Right, yeah, yeah Dustin right. McKagan is very excited. Yeah, good That's deal. I fun. always felt though it's like you guys in Saskatchewan back in the day, like Saskatoon Blades. That that could have been NHL. You know, it was well, like probably you know, for a minute there. Brett, the, the the thing is, even with the with the players that have left the Saskatoon Blades and went on, the players that have left the Prince Albert Raiders mm -hmm. and went on, they all went yeah. on. A lot of them went on to have NHL careers. And I'll oh, tell yeah. you, there was, a, there was a time that I played the show with Neil McCoy. He did the anthem at, uh, uh, where was it now? St. Louis. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this guy came up and was talking to Neil backstage. And he said, where's your guy from Canada? So I walked over and, I, and I'm not much of a sports fan. Like really, I don't know sports. My brothers do. I know <laughs> nothing about sports. So I go talk to this guy and I said, uh, nice to meet you. And he said, where are you from? I said, Prince Albert. He said, I used to love playing in PA. The PA Raiders he said, I used to come there and just beat the hell out of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, I at him and I said, what's your name? He said, this is what I do best. And he signed this autograph for me and handed it. And it was Tony Twist. Oh, oh Tony Twist, wow. the fighter on the on the on blues. Yeah, yeah. Seriously cool. He was the big dude, like me. me. Yeah. So he went up against like Bomb Gardner and all those guys. Mm -hmm. and, but the thing that was really cool is I went to school with Dave Manson. Okay. Oh, yeah. another great Mike fighter. Mike. Yeah. And Mike Medano mm. just started the 10th grade when I was graduating grade 12. Wow. I remember wow. Mike Medano started the 10th grade at our high school. Like, man, yeah. dude, he would walk around. It's like everyone just went, woof. They were following him all over the place because mm. everybody knew the ability this guy had. He's sure. Hall of Famer, for sure. So yeah. fast forward, mm -hmm. I'm sitting there with uh, in Dallas mm -hmm. with Neil, and they started the Dallas Stars, and hockey's coming in. They kept asking me questions about hockey, and I said, don't ask me. I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, but I said, I do know some of the players. And I said, I know the assistant coach, his name is Rick Wilson. I said, I grew up from Rick Wilson just down the street from, from me and Prince Albert. I said, mm -hmm. I know Dave Manson, and I know Mike Badano. And Neil said, you're full of it. And I said, I'm serious. I know these guys. He said, okay. <laughs> so this is back in the day. We're on, on, in the Dallas airport, and there's pay phones lined up everywhere. No cell phones. So I'm on a pay phone. And the Dallas Stars walk right behind me. And they went and got on the plane. So I got off the phone, hung up, went and talked to Neil. Neil said, I thought you knew the Dallas Stars. And I said, well, I, I do. Why? He said, they just walked by you. They're at that gate over there. So I go flying over, and I looked at some guy that looked like a hockey player. I said, dude, do you play for the Dallas Stars? And he said, yes. I said, can you do me a favor? Is Rick Wilson there? He said, you just went on the plane. I said, can you give him this note? So I wrote down a note really quick and my number. Please give it to him. We grew up together in Prince Albert. Well, Rick called me the next day and said he was going to be at our show the following week. Cool. You know, in some place like Montana playing a show. And I said, I'm going to put you on the guest list. So lo and behold, my mom and my uncle ended up coming down to that show and Rick was going to be there. So I told Neil, you got to put two more people on the guest list. Very special. He said, <laughs> I ain't saying shit. You're going to see who they are. So all of a sudden, Rick Wilson comes walking up. I looked at Neil. I said, Neil, meet Rick Wilson, the assistant coach of the Dallas Stars. He looks and he says, Donnie and I grew up together just down the street. I looked at him and I said, told you, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> well done. That's cool. <clears throat> that's amazing. Well, well you're right. It's like a lot of like either play music or play hockey. Uh, you know, that's oh, what you yeah, do. And definitely. You know, yeah. And that's the thing. My, my hockey career, as I said earlier, ended up when I was about 10. And uh, I actually had a breakaway, which I thought I did. And my glasses fogged up. And I ended up ah. one goalie. <laughs> I just said, Dad, this game's not for me. Oh my God. <laughs> That's your legacy. That's your hockey legacy. I played left wing, and my dad used to take out a paper. He says, You see this? He said, This is you. You go up and down left wing. He said, You just go here. You don't even move in here. He said, You just stay on that side. You can move yeah. in here if you want to. I'm going, I'm too scared. Uh, <laughs> I gave it up, traded my stick for a bow. <laughs> well, well done. A good Speaking choice, I think. Oh, Speaking of which, Donnie, I'm curious to know, like, you play all this stuff. What what did you start out on? Was it? Was you it know what? Originally, what I started out with, I, I started out with guitar because the family and I, like, mom and dad, we didn't have a lot of money, and I'm the youngest of four kids. And the school had this program where we could like borrow a guitar, like a library book, sign it out, mm -hmm. but you're responsible for it. And the lady showed me a couple of chords on the guitar, and I went home and started playing, and I just got really interested and loved it because we grew up listening to music ever since I was little. 
even five years older. I remember listening to Merle Haggard, Charlie Pride, Buck Owens, mm -hmm. and dad had the old eight track tapes and the record. Oh, and, yeah. you know, going all the way back to that. So growing up with that style of music, and then it was my brother, my oldest brother that introduced me to The Clash, B-52s. Uh, first time I heard Van Fandango ZZ Top. Sure. Her heard it on the X, and I flipped yep. up. <clears throat> First time I heard ACDC, and that's all because of my brother. So I mm -hmm. give my family credit. People say, who's your musical influence? I said, my family. Mm -hmm. Because sure, they're yeah. the ones that introduced me to country, to rock, to blues, and everything. It just all come together, and it just mm -hmm. stayed with me, and I incorporated that to the fiddle and brought that Great. into it. Amazing. It's, it's funny because when I, was, when I was early on, you know, the first stuff I heard was, you know, the Beatles and all the 50s rock and roll stuff and all that, but... In my dad's garage where he spent a lot of his time was it was always country or you know honky tonk piano stuff um you know ragtime kind of piano but like all those old songs from whatever the you know 60s 70s sort of uh country era i mean it's like we were probably all the similar we all, we know every word <laughs> every oh, one of those songs merle haggard and yeah. all, that, all that stuff and but it's interesting how, you know, then we go whatever, go rock or go here or there. But you stayed, I mean, you're known for the country sort of being in the country sort of circles. But you li listen to all of it. Right. It's just interesting until, how that goes. Until I met Kenny. And well, once what, once I had met Kenny, uh, th this, this is what he had taught me a lot of stuff um, it, as far as how to sing, how to sing the rock stuff. And oh, okay. Was, my nickname with Kenny was always Donny Boy. He always called me Donny Boy. And he said, Donny Boy, he says, when you're singing and you're singing rock, he says, you don't really have to sing down from the diaphragm as much and just belt it out like you country guys do. <laughs> said, a lot of times, he said, that's why you'll see singers and you'll hear them. They have a head voice. So yeah. he's going to talk me about the head voice, hmm. how to sing from the chest, the head voice. And he said, you don't have to belt it out so much. And it just, oh man, that guy taught me so much. It's just absolutely incredible. And and I'll carry everything he taught me to the day I die. Absolutely. Yeah. He was in, and I miss him. I miss him dearly. And, yeah. and guys, I'm telling you right now, I know somehow, some way he's, he's watching this, probably laughing his ass off over some of the stories we're going to tell. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I know for a fact, Elena right now is watching. I love you, Elena. I know you're watching right now. She says, I'm going to put you guys on the big TV and I'm going to put you on surround sound so I can make sure I hear you. Uh, <laughs> That's great. Hi, Elena. Hi, Elena. Hi, Elena. Hey. Wow. Can, yeah, that uh, was, uh, go ahead. Can you confirm the story that, uh, so Corey and I are crashing the limo story, Donnie, because being there, I remember being there and everything, but what can, can we get your take on this? Like, cause were you getting Kenny, already good friends by then assuming yeah. so I'll, I'll tell you what if if you want me to take you just to fast forward as really quick as i can all the way through when i had yeah. first heard kenny shields music was i was about 13 years old and i used to go to a buddy's house his name was glenn and he always had these records and new records would come out like ario speedwagon got to hear these guys you got to hear this and one day he brought a street heart album home you got to hear these guys and i heard action for the very first time then i heard under my thumb and, and I heard that and I was thinking, Spider playing bass on Under My Thumb. Are you freaking kidding? Mm. So, next level. Okay, so I'm listening to all this and then I hear Snow White. And I went and I remember hearing it on the radio. Now, fast forward, I always knew the music, but I never realized what Kenny looked like. I totally forgot what he looked like. And now this was uh, Telemiracle 35, I believe it was in 2011. Streetheart was invited and we couldn't wait. We all had our albums ready to meet him. And they bring us in a couple of days early. So me and Brad Johnner would always go in early and we'd, we'd just go do meet and greets and media stuff. Sure. Well, Kenny and Elena were there. And I'd always see this guy walking up and down the hallway at the Besborough in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. We'd always pass and say, morning, evening, hey. And I'd walk by, never stop and talk to him. So finally that <laughs> Friday rolls around and we all get together. And you guys know that everyone gets together for a big, a big dinner and just a meet and greet kind of thing with all the cast. Yeah. Well, Kenny's standing in the doorway. And I look at my wife, Patty, and I said, oh, there's that guy. I kept seeing him all the time. And I'm, she knew, he knew I was talking about him. He walks over. He says, okay, who the hell are you? <laughs> and I said, I'm Donnie Peronto. And he says, oh, you're Donnie. And I said, yeah. I said, who are you? He said, I'm Kenny Shields. And I went, oh, I felt like such an idiot. <laughs> he took me in and we went and sat and I met Elena and we just hit it off. 
we had a bond and we went and sat with the band and we had a bond somehow, some way since that minute. And every time we would talk and I'll get back to some of the stuff about Kenny, what we used to talk about and things, but I'll fast forward to how much he had meant to me in 2012. I was nominated for a Juno and this was my second Juno nomination. He said, I'm so proud of you. You're nominated. He said, that's good. And I was going to Ottawa. So everything was leaning towards that. I had a real good chance at winning. And he said, regardless what happened, he said, I want you to call me right after it's done. So I called him and, you know, and I said, uh, didn't win. He said, that's okay. Now he said, get off your ass, go back in the studio, record another album. Junos are coming to Regina in 2013. And I want to see you get nominated. If you get nominated, Ellen and I are going to come to Regina, spend the entire weekend with you. Hmm. He said, that's a promise. I said, okay, on one condition. He said, what's that? You come in the studio and sing Snow White with me. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. how that worked. So then he said, done deal. So the first thing I did was I brought him in and we, we recorded the video also in 2012. And that summer, bringing him into the studio to record, uh, we're sitting there and I'd ask Kenny, I said, I got a plan. I'm going to sing the first verse. You sing verse two. We'll come back in and maybe trade some stuff on the chorus. I said, okay. Just So he tried singing chorus or verse two tried about three times and it wasn't working so finally we just said okay kenny eric anderson was there was was my manager at the time and eric had said kenny just sing the entire song start to finish fuck one take oh of course yeah <laughs> sat back just blew our mind and he said okay so he come out and he looks and he says okay did you get what you needed i said yeah i said i think so he says well good well go finish the damn song now <laughs> But what's so funny, you know, just even back then when I went, because we recorded the tracks in Nashville and I had called Kenny. I said, Kenny, I said, what key are we doing this in? He said, the original. I said, for fuck, that's in B, that's in the key of B. Are you serious? <laughs> he said, yes. I said, I'm still doing it in all the original keys. He said, I mm -hmm. quit drinking and I quit doing drugs to keep my voice. He said, that's the promise I made to myself and that's how I was able to do it. So when I got in the studio, I slapped an old capo on the nads just to get up that high for me. <laughs> Cause I'm used to singing in G, <laughs> you know? So, okay, anyway, yeah. so we ended up doing the song. And once that was done, lo and behold, thank God we did get nominated for a Juno. And I called, I called up Kenny and Ellen. And I said, we did get nominated. He said, okay, we're booking our room. Everything was done. So I had a publicist with us at the time that come out from, from Ontario. And she, and I said, anywhere I go, Kenny goes with me. He is, he right. is me or I don't go. I don't care if it's an interview. He's with me. He's my right-hand guy. Okay. So that morning, do you remember, Brent, we had uh, breakfast together? I do. Brent was the first one that I had met. And I sat down and I met Brent. And Brent was telling me that how, how you got the job with Slash. And you were telling, telling me how you did that and uh, how you used to play with Kenny in the band before. And we were just chatting. And then once that was done, that evening we were getting ready for the Junos. And what I walked out and Corey was with you standing up by the limo. So we're just about to get in the limbo. And I looked at Corey and I said, dude, after all these years, I said, man, I've been just dying to meet you because we've never met until that moment right there. It was the first time. So that would have been 2013. And I, what are you guys doing? And you said nothing. We just we don't have tickets for the Junos or anything. <laughs> I looked at the publicists and I said, you remember what I said about Kenny? Add two to that list. These guys go <laughs> wherever we go. And I said, you may not have a clue who these guys are right now, but I said, trust me. You no, just trust me. Get them in the limo. So that's that's how all that happened. We ended up going there, and it was it was great. It, amazing. It was a great evening. That's awesome. Amazing. I'm gonna find the photo on my phone right now. While yeah. we're cool. Good idea. Oh, dude, I, I'd, I'd love to get a copy of that. But you know, even going back further before that, Kenny and I, uh, we, we used to chat. We'd always talk about the music industry. And the one thing I think that we both had in common is we both have this uh, little thing. Sometimes this industry can really get you down and get you depressed. Mm -hmm. get you that. And I also suffered from that really bad. It's so, so bad. I even told him, I said, I wanted to quit. Mm -hmm. I wanted to come back. And I said, and he said, what, what's, what is the hardest thing he said, you've struggled with all through the years. And I said, honestly, I said, I hate to say it, but it's, it's appearance. I said, because everyone always says this is such a, a physical kind of industry. And if you look a little bit bigger than the next guy or whatever it's going to be. And I said, I've struggled with that since I was a kid. And I said, and it bothers me. I said, why can't they just take you for what you do and your music and love you for who you are instead of for how you look? Sure. That's not what it should be like. 
So then he told me sides of him that he went through and all the stuff that he's gone through with, with, with the depression and how tough it was for him and some of the things that really hurt him through his life and uh, all the good times that they had and how the industry has changed. So that's the really, I think, where the big connection come. So we were there to lean on each other when it was when we needed each other somehow some way we always knew that person that we needed to talk so literally i'd call him up and elena would always say i knew it was you donny boy that would always call because i would hear him laugh because <laughs> right the, the first thing i'd say is a stupid punchline to a joke right off the bat <laughs> on the punchline and uh going seeing him in a shows uh he'd always you know, he always pulled me out of the crowd and jump up and sing with him. And just, it was just such a different feeling for me. I said, I've been on a lot of stages with country acts. I've done a lot of shows and I've never got nervous. But the first time I jumped up a street hard, I almost shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> because for me to get up with those guys, the energy and, and this is back, you know, Tim was playing drums and Bruce is on bass. It's like, Daryl's on keys. I'm going, Jeff's on guitar. It's like that Marshall stack going, holy crap. <laughs> it was beautiful and i loved it and it made you sing you know it made you sing and just but he was just so giving to me for some reason and him and i hit it off and he was like one of my one, one of my best friends i can honestly say in this That's amazing. and it was jeff neal that actually reached out to me <laughs> to say you know we you know to let us know about the snow white cover that you did with kenny we're going to play that in a second but, uh, you know, Jeff says you need to get him on the show. He's a great, great hang. And, he, you know, he basically thinks the world of you as well. So, uh, and I said, yeah, of course, we got to do that. And let me know when you drop the song, which you did like a week ago. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so or a couple weeks ago or something? Yeah, on the 14th of June. Okay. Awesome. So we have the video here. Should we uh, put it on? Put Hell the, yeah. Spin that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Here we go. I'll never forget Kenny Shields. Oh, wait. Let's talk about this. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so Kim, yeah. Kim's also a Saskatchewan boy, which uh, Kim is on uh, Sons of Anarchy. He was in the movie. He's a, he's a very, very successful actor. Uh, where is he from? Saskatoon? Donnie, he's, do you know? Yeah, originally from Saskatoon. And and we had uh, we had met Kim at Telemiracle 40. Oh, okay. So Kim Coates was coming. And and then I can, I always pushed every year. I said, you got to get Street Heart back. You got to get Street Heart back. And they'd say, well, we got these guys. We got these guys. So finally, Tell them Miracle 40 comes. And I said, you guys, you got to get Street Heart back or I ain't coming. It's that simple. Get <laughs> Street Heart back. So they got Street, you know, just not, not that's how they did it. But so they bring in Street Heart and I find out Kim Coates is there. So right. I contacted a really good friend of mine, Karen Schman, who works at Gabriel Dumont Institute, who used to be a teacher. Well, she taught Kim Coates basketball. So that was my go-to when I had met him. So he was standing there, and I go up, and I said, we have a friend in common. Uh, it's Karen Schmann. She used to teach you basketball. And he said, dude, he said, this is amazing. And he says, well, I'm a huge street art fan. I said, well, Kenny's a really good friend of mine. Do you want to meet him? Are you kidding me? I said, come on. So I took him. Well, because <laughs> I did that and went out of my way for him, we just hit it off that entire weekend. Just great. an incredible guy, like a great, great guy. And um, what, what, whatever I needed, he did a video for me. Uh, well, that weekend as well for the anti-bullying campaign I was doing. Uh, but just fast forward to this, what you're about to see. I reached out to Kim this year and I said that uh, I'm releasing Snow White. We have the unseen video footage and I'd love nothing more. I know you were a big fan of Streetheart. Would you do the introduction? He said, consider it done. And he went out of his way. He's so busy right now on about a three month uh, film shoot that's happening up in Eastern, uh, Eastern the U.S., Okay. I think New York. He's in New York, state of New York right now, doing that for an HBO thing. So right. he went out of his way to do this for me, and it's about a one-minute clip before the video starts. So that, and I appreciate him doing it. He's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Ever, Saskatchewan boy, Saskatchewan boy. My first concert, probably late seventies, early eighties. Streetheart, Kenny Shields. Under my thumb, Hollywood. <laughs> and then, years later, I meet Donnie, Donnie Parento in Regina. Tell a miracle. I met Kenny. Tell a miracle. We had dinner together. I'll never forget it. And then Donnie tells me that those two have some unseen footage of the two of them together 
Snow White. Donnie, thank goodness you're only a triple threat. Fiddle player, guitar, singer, Kenny Shields, rock star. Because if you danced, that'd be too much. <laughs> Snow White, peeps, you're going to love it. Crank the speakers. I mean, it's incredible. Uh, so I want to just say that you, know, you will never find a more sweeter guy in his business than Donnie. And So good. Awesome. So good. Don, what a great, great arrangement. Yeah, that uh, that sign was at the uh, casino in Regina. That yes, big that big sign of Kenny. Yeah. Yeah, that's such a it's so good to see him. I love the late stage Kenny in the black suit, cutting a rug, always dancing. I loved it. His dance it's, was amazing. He always oh, yeah. is my favorite, one of my favorite voices in the entire world. Well, the thing is, is like Elena told me that after she watched the video for the first time that that's the way Kenny used to dance around the around their place whenever he'd play around with her. 
just joking <laughs> and, and do his moves and stuff. Yeah. And, and that's what I told him is that's the one thing I can't do is dance. <laughs> I think it, I think you did a hell of a job in the key of B, my friend. Oh yeah. Man. I, I I tried. I did the best I could, and I, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. And thanks for spinning that and playing. It. Oh well, next time we come, if we cross paths again, you'll have to get up and do Snow White with us. See? Oh, yeah. Me, I'd love to. That'd be a blast. Well, I, I can't I, tell I, me I, now. I'll do it. Hell yeah! I think the fiddle is such a great instrument too, Donnie and Corey. Chime in here, but you know, just the whole idea of no frets and the commitment to it's a you know that's not an easy instrument to to master. It, it it's it's definitely a tough one. The thing is, is that. Uh, even even when you're playing and trying to do things, I think the best advice I ever got when I was when I first started, don't imitate fiddle players. Mm -hmm. Listen to other players. Listen to horn players. Listen mm -hmm. to different players altogether. And that's why I think a lot of the way that my style and the way that I play, uh, even meeting Kelvin Volrath the first time, who's a legendary fiddle player in Canada and all over, like he's just incredible. And I'd sit down with him and I would ask him, show me this, show me this. And he would always tell me, don't imitate me. Take the idea um, that I have and be yourself. Be yourself. He said, there's nothing like when someone walks into a room and hears you play and they say, I knew that was you playing right away. I mm -hmm. could tell because that's your style. Create your own style. And that's, that's, that's so what cool. I ended up doing. And But but playing this on, I, I got to give Kenny credit for that because Kenny's the one that suggested put, put a little fiddle solo on there. You got to have your fiddle on there, Donnie boy. You got to do it. <laughs> I also like the banjo on there was really cool. It was neat. And that's of Mur Murray Pulver for, from Winnipeg. Mur oh, that's oh, Murray. That on. Yeah, Murray. Oh, Murray. Yeah, yeah Murray's awesome. Banjo on there. And then also we just sent it off to Murray this year again. And he, he put some guitar stuff on there on verse three. If you can kind of hear that, kink, 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 that guitar. Oh, I yeah. love it. So when I called Bart and Bart sent it to me, I said, put that through the entire verse. I said, I just love that. It's really catchy. Great. Then, yeah. oh, that, that was Bart McKay in there too? Well, Bart, Bart, Bart actually uh, co-produced the project with me. Okay. So yeah, so we, we just did a remix of this cut and just Bart says, we're just gutting the whole thing and redoing everything right down to the drums uh -huh. and just brought it back to life. And yeah. when I played it, it just jumped off my speakers. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, he did a great that's job. Cool. Somebody asked if uh, Tuke ever played that and, and we, yes. uh, John, oh, yeah. we, we did, oh, yeah. we played with it Kenny. live before. Yeah. With Kenny. Yeah. With Kenny. Yeah. Yeah version or did we actually we i think we did that too but yeah, before you were in the band shane i think we, we oh, did okay. it with kenny i think we did it with jeff yeah uh, we, we did it with jeff nashville's yeah. yeah yeah i think the the yeah. important point and you mentioned about catchy donnie is that and adding violin to you know fiddle to a a song a good song is a good song and that song can be played acoustically on its mm -hmm. own you can make it a country song. You can make it, yes. you know, the way it was, the way Streetheart recorded it, you know, with keyboards and guitars. But you know what I mean? Like, that's just a great song. That's a timeless really song. Is. And the coolest thing it, about it is it's really like three chords and there's a lot yeah. going on in, within those yeah. three chords. Yeah. You know, and there are a couple of things I'll add to it. In the very beginning, what, when I had reached out, if anyone looks this up online and say, what's the lyrics for Snow White? Look it up. You're going to get the wrong lyrics right off the hop because it says, huh. ah, na, na, na. With the N, N A. Oh yeah, Shala. Yeah, and I called Kenny and I said, "What is the proper lyrics?" And he said, "It's la la la." He said, "For Christ's sakes, don't screw that up." That's the only <laughs> contribution I had to the song. He said, "Don't screw up my part." He said, "It's la la la." So that's the way. Uh, that's the way we did it ever since. And then uh, we went uh, w when we found out. Well, when Kenny had passed away, uh, and and I I got that call. It was just uh, that was devastating, devastating for me. I remember I was. Uh, I was actually doing a day job at the time. I don't know why the hell I was doing it, but everyone's got to go through something. So mm -hmm. I got the phone call and I go outside and it was my wife calling and she's crying. And I'm sorry if I get emotional when I'm doing this, you guys, but it still brings up a, uh, of course. and it just, Oh fuck that hurt. It hurt. Yeah. It hurt big time because we Absolutely. just literally that text message that you guys see in the video was from July 1st. Mm. I was at Mosaic stadium the brand new Mosaic Stadium, and and I was the very first one to be invited to do the halftime show. Oh now, wow! So excited. So I said to Kenny, I said, "I'm doing a song, Deep in the Heart of Saskatchewan." I wrote, and I'm doing. I'm the only one out here. Thirty-five thousand people. I just love it. And I said, "I hope you're having a great day. I'm so excited. Love you and I miss you." And he said, "I'm doing a show too," and that was his last show he did. Right, um, right. Hospital after that, and I didn't realize how bad it was. And I keep in touch with Jeff, and Jeff would message me back and. 
But then uh, the day my wife called and she was crying on the phone, I knew something was bad. And I said, what's going on? She said, we just lost Kenny. Mm, and I just, oh. I, I literally dropped to my knees and my work yeah. just said, go home. And I said, okay. So I, I did and called Jeff was one of my first phone calls. And I just, I cried like a baby. I just I cried bet. and he tried to console me and, and, uh, but he was there for me, you know, and it's just, I, I miss, I miss my friend. I, I really do. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's just do. a, so then when Jeff contacted me and said that we want you to come to Winnipeg to be part of the, the memorial for Kenny. We're going to have lover boy there. Harlequin's going to be there. Every, like, we're the whole whack of people were there. And this was like 8,500 people at the baseball park ended up showing up that night. But I remember that day I reached out because they wanted me to say something the next day after, after this concert was done. And I remember I reached out to Corey and I messaged Corey and uh, I actually called Brent and I had left Brent a message and I said, what do you want me to say on your behalf? I know you guys can't be here. So I want to say something on your behalf. And Brent and I talked and he told me stories about what it was like working with Kenny. He said, Kenny was like a father to him on the road in the very beginning. And I brought all that to the table when I got up and talked because I wanted to do that. And I just said, I know Corey played with you before. And, and this is what Corey would probably say, you know, and uh, cause Corey, Corey reached out to me. I think it was a couple of days after cause you were out of country and didn't get the message right away, but that's okay. I still spoke on your behalf. Um, yeah. But doing that concert, getting up there on that stage with those guys, I remember I was standing there and I did uh, with Lisa Windsor, and we did Snow White together. So yeah. Lisa and I, and unrehearsed, she's, she's an incredible singer. And mm -hmm. she did a rehearsal the night before, but I couldn't get there the night before because I'm driving all the way from Prince Albert to Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. So we get to the hotel. Mm -hmm. I went the next day and we did it cold. I walked out and just said, oh, so literally I'm standing. The first time I had met Mike Reno was that mm -hmm. day. And I was a huge Lover Boy fan. So I meet Mike Reno for the first time. So Mike's on my left. George is on my right, lead singer for uh, Harlequin. Harlequin. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, and the memories of me being a kid, 13 again, pop back into my head, and I'm going, holy fuck. I'm okay. standing here between these two guys. And I looked at both of them, and I said, how did I get here? They said, Kenny, <laughs> they said, Kenny got you here. Now go do it. I went out, and I sang my freaking ass off. I just went yeah. out and did it as loud as I could, as hard as I could, and just so exciting to do that, that Pete, the engineer, said, Donnie, let me tell you this. When, when I was done singing, he told me after – he said, everyone was around three for volume. When you hit, I had to turn you down. He said, that's what you went. You just went whoop. So <laughs> I brought the volume down. But it was so exciting and such a such a fantastic uh, memorial for him. And uh, to even have a day in Saskatchewan named after Kenny Shields, Kenny Shields Day. And that was, right. all, was all brought forward. And th this, this guy just, uh, that was one of the things that I remember even going back to the Junos when we were there. Uh, he used to love, he loved meeting people, you know, and there's times that he didn't want to meet anybody. And there was one time I took him up to this, this new band that was starting out in Ontario. And I can't remember the name of the band. So I bring him up and I just said, you guys got to meet this guy. This is Kenny Shields. He's a rock star from Street Hearts and everything. And they kind of had this deer in the headlight look. So Kenny kind of played it off when he was done. He put his arm around me, walked away. He said, those fuckers had no clue who I was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, you got the picture. Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. And so that's crashing the red carpet, Corey and I. Now, can I just explain? I figured out why we were there, Corey. We were playing in the Juno Cup. Oh, we were playing hockey. hockey. Right, right, right. Yeah, so we were actually at the Junos, but our plan ah, was we were going. That's right. So we played the night before at the Mosaic Stadium there, played hockey, your brother and I, and you and I, and, and Jim Cuddy and everybody, right? Yeah. And, uh, and that's then, when you guys recorded that. Uh, remember you did the um, Life is a Highway kind of thing or something? That's remember right. That? Oh, you got to find that, Corey, because right. you kicked out on that. Yes. Yes. This is all coming back. And then... Um, Hold on. I got pictures. We'll keep talking here. Um, what else do I got? Stand by, stand what by. What year was that, Fitz? 13. Yeah, so, but we, I, I just looked on my phone, Todd. You and I had just come back from like Turkey 
and yeah, exactly. We see like in the middle of the the you know Eastern Europe and stuff, and somehow we probably were like catching our breath, and somehow like an idiot, I went right up to to Moose Jaw with Corey and played to hockey. Play hockey, yeah, exactly. hockey. Jeez, <clears throat> I was probably in a coma on my couch. <laughs> but I think we did. So hear me out, guys. I'm just looking here. We we did a um, we did some gigs there, a toque thing. I think it was the charity gig. Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking. I'm looking. Spider maybe. Yeah, we did, and that's when Kenny came and, up and played with us. And uh, uh, what's his name on keyboards from Guess Who? You know, that guy. Yeah, Leonard. Leonard, <laughs> Leonard from Guess Leonard Who. Shaw yeah. Guess who. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Leonard Shaw. Yeah, that's it. What's his name? Old so and so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we. I. I feel very fortunate to have managed to get on stage with Kenny several times. Just in that Fitz had played with him, but I, you know, for me it was always, you know, Kenny Shields. From Streetheart, I held on to that youthful sort of like you mean the guy from Streetheart, the best band. I mean the fact that they were local to us Saskatchewan people, right. um, even though they kind of relocated to Winnipeg and whatever you want to say, but you know to us it was a massive deal. But getting to get on stage with him was, it was a real lesson in like oh wow this is like star quality going on here. Oh, and, and to li to listen to stories and and just just incredible. Go ahead. I'll, I'll oh, here you go. go. This was the. Uh, is it going to have audio? That's how do that's we hear me. It, Corey? That's me. Oh yeah. yeah. Can we can't hear it, dude? Yeah, and you you start singing yeah. the uh, "Life Is a Wait, Highway." You can't hear that. No, no, we can't hear it at we all. Gotta right? hear, we got to hear the intro part. This okay. is before you. This is before Corey got his wig. <laughs> <laughs> before the weave came on. <laughs> the weave, oh, yeah, no. exactly. But I'm not sure why. So if if I. You don't hear that? Nope. There's you don't Jim hear Cuddy, that. There's oh. Uh, oh. yeah. Oh no. Okay, that's well it's all right. Oh, it's no. all right. I don't know how to get <laughs> it, it to it sound. Makes, that's why it's a live show. We we get to do this kind of stuff. Yeah, and it's CBC the last music. Thing. The, the Canadian broadcasting system. Yeah, well, I don't know. Like well, you how, pretty good on the skates, how are you there, dude. Yeah, I, not a lot of people have the skills of skating and playing guitar at the same time. I will say that. <laughs> I've never seen that before. So basically, if and you then, can't hear it, he walks in, and then they they start playing "Life Is a uh -huh. Highway," and how would I get the soundtrack? And oh. it's live too, so it's kind of funny because you guys come in here, and eventually these guys, Jay Bodner, there's Jay, Jay Bodner, Jay Bodner. Yeah, Bodner. Just pause Let's it for it. a sec. Pause it for a sec. Uh, okay. I, we okay. Uh, I got to find it here. Brad Delgarno, so the New York Islanders, right there. Brad Delgarno. Oh, really? So yeah, yeah that's right. These great NHL players that jump on the ice and are very nice and polite that they don't take us out, but all us musicians are skating with these ex NHL superstars. That's so crazy. Yeah. Wow. Corey's a much uh, better hockey player than I, and Shane, we got to get you on a Juno cup. Yeah. Once I get a new back. For sure. <laughs> that back transplant. I'd love to do it, but I know my first time on the ice would always probably end up in a, in a, I'd end up in the hospital doing something stupid and it'd be like, ah, we need you as the coach. We need you as the coach. No, I'll yeah, play. Exactly. I haven't played in so long, but I think I probably have a real blast doing it. But I, I know I'd probably do something stupid. Can you start again? Look at this shot of us. Remember this, guys? Oh, this was in Winnipeg. Uh, and that. Spider. Yeah, it's kind so of and Spider. Out. And that was one of our, our early two gigs. Oh, shit. Wow. Three toques and two street hearts. Yeah. It was right, uh, right. we cool. we, we had Spider up playing bass the whole night, and then Kenny got up as a guest. Yeah, I think we had um, uh, that was when we had uh, John Angus from the Trues on guitar that night. No, no, I, I I think Corey was there that night. Weren't you there that night, Corey? Well, uh, there was a John Angus night, but the last one we did right before we played Moose Jaw, Corey was you and okay, I was on drums, sense, yeah. and that was when you played. Uh, Pat McCullough had the Jets guitar that night, and. Thomas Steen brought some. Oh, look at that There's with Elena. Great shot. <clears throat> Send me Elena. that. Send me that wow. You guys look like a band. Wow. We look so proud. We actually yeah. look so proud because we we got in without tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Donnie Peranta. Yeah. Brent is thinking right now. I knew we'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get it over the edge for us. Oh, no worries, man. Kenny, I love it. Oh, they, they both look so happy. 
Now I'll tell you, yeah. when when I went to uh, Winnipeg for the for the memorial, uh, we I, I spoke with Elena after, and Elena said, you know, Donnie boy, what the dream was of Kenny when he retired, because he was actually retiring after that year. He he wanted to just stop and just relax. He was going to take Elena to Nashville. That was their oh. dream. They wanted to go to Memphis, go see Elvis, Graceland, and do do the trip. So my wife Patty and I, we both said, we're going to take you. We will take you. I said, Ellen, I used to live there. I said, I'll take you around and show you a bunch of the stuff. And and I got friends of mine there that, you know, uh, would, would love to be there. Because my buddy, Rod Jansen, who the guy that played True. with Bentley, Bentley, was at, at the function we did in Winnipeg. So he even said to Ellen, you come down. He said, I'll take care of you too. No worries. Great. So booked the trip, brought Ellen down there. And there was one night we went out and watched Rod and the band play down on Lower Broadway. And so we had a few drinks, and Ellen said, Donnie, get up and sing uh, Snow White. I said, I don't know if the band knows it. So she went up to Rod, and she said, you guys know Snow White? And he said, well, I could show it to him real quick. What's it going to take? He says, well, she said, give me your bucket. She took that tip bucket and walked around to everybody and come back with $300. And she handed 300 bucks and said, play Snow White now. And they just stopped <laughs> playing the song in the middle. Rod looks at him and says, Kia B, boys, follow me. And boof, we kicked it off. <laughs> We did so. That's awesome. Oh, it was great. And she's got it on videotape. We just loved it. But just a beautiful time. And the thing is, I always say Kenny will reach out some some way, somehow, even while we were there. And I don't know if people believe in that or not, but I'm a firm believer. So we went down, and there was a special number on a bus we went down to uh, Graceland that Elena sat in that was Kenny's favorite number. That was the, that was the, the seat that Elena had. So we go down there. We're walking around and just at the, uh, just looking at the sidewalk in Memphis on Beale Street. And we just started thinking about Kenny and talking about him. We looked down on the curb. Lo and behold, written in the concrete was Kenny. No way. Was Kenny. Written in what? the concrete. Wow. And I'm looking at this and I said, you can't tell me that he's not. She said, Donnie, he's here with us. He's just. Oh, oh, so. And that's what it was like. You know, it was, it was so cool. But th that trip was just uh, just a beautiful time. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. awesome. What a great story. Oh, thank you. So, we, we're, As you can see, our, our, our Saskatchewan Rough Riders jerseys were dirty that day. So we, <laughs> we wore those. Hey, <laughs> it's interesting. Hold on. I, that's <laughs> from 2011. And wait a minute. Wait a minute. That photo was taken before the Winnipeg Jets even were back in Winnipeg. Oh, that's, that's right. right. That's right. Sorry. Yeah, this was like we didn't know the Jets were coming back. We just wow. decided, one day, ah, we're in Winnipeg. We'll do a nice, you know, ode to the Jets that are no longer there. And I think. And if you later, close up on, if you close up on Corey's crotch, that's a Boba Fett belt. It is. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I was jealous of that belt. Where'd you get that damn belt? <laughs> now hey, spiders so, in lover spider spiders in lover boy these days. For those that's right. Don't know, oh, yeah. I just went to Spotify. Of course, you can find the Snow White version, Donnie's version, anywhere. It's it's everywhere on all the the platforms. Right? Here, yeah, yeah. And something too, guys, I'm really proud of. This week, we found out we just released the song a week ago, and we found out that uh, there's a indie, the highest uh, the highest indie artist or whatever they they have these certain people during the week. So this song and me, we made the top ten, and I thought originally that was just the country guys. But it's all across Canada. Anyone that's indie, mm, great. So, like wow. you guys, everyone, anyone that released a single. So, the thing that makes me feel good is it's on everyone's radar right now. And I just hope that people request it, call in and request it uh, to the radio stations because everyone will have it. Even though they say we don't have it, yes, you do. Don't mm. lie. I know you have yeah. it. So yeah. just uh, call in and request it if you want to hear Kenny's voice again and th this little schmuck. If you want to hear me. Get on there and request it. I, I, All right, I love it. It'd, do, it'd be it'd be really cool. That's awesome. Right on, Donnie. Yeah. I, I, I'd love I'd love to hear about your uh, anti-bullying campaign and uh, yeah, that oh, sort of thing. Sure. Uh, so that all started. Um, I used to always do presentations and talks, even back when I was with Neil McCoy. I'd always come back to in Prince Albert, and I'd go to my school, my elementary school, and I'd try to talk to the kids and encourage them to, you know, follow their dreams. And this is what I'm doing now. This is the same school I went to when I was a kid. So don't ever let anybody tell you you can't do anything. And I'd go through that. And there was one day when I started looking at the newspaper. And what really bothered me is I was seeing young kids, 12, 13, committing suicide because they're being bullied. 
-hmm. and they didn't know how to do it and they just ended their life because of it and i said i'm so sick of seeing this i have to do something so i have uh the microphone i have a guitar i'm able to do something so literally we finished up doing a presentation and i wrote the song on the way home just in my head before i even had the guitar i had the idea and the melody was there so i ran in the house and grabbed my phone and recorded just this idea and this melody and it all came together really fast and once it was done i presented it to the radio station at uh, cjww in saskatoon and i figure if they want to help me release this song they can actually pay to go in the studio and get it recorded so they did and the uh the manager's daughter uh michelle came in and sang with me on the song in the studio we had bart produce it and that that's that was released out and we did it as a completely free release didn't make a nickel off it it wasn't about that mm -hmm. i just wanted people to hear that song that it, it would help them now where the idea for the song come from was there was a little girl that came forward up north in one of my talks i did in front of 300 kids she had balls to come forward and say she was bullied as a kid on the school bus and they used to they used to punch her they pull her hair they'd spit on her one day they held her down and they cut her hair jeepers and so oh. i said when when did someone finally found out she says well i was having a bath one night and mom walked in and seen the bruises all over my body Jeez. Oh, and i was boy. there and my daughter who's now 13 i was on stage and i was crying and I just said, mm -hmm. why didn't you tell anyone? She says, I didn't want to make it worse for the bullies. Wow. I said, really? How much more worse were you waiting for? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's what you have to do for me now. I said, you need to be strong. And tell you just told your story. Now you have to be strong for everyone else and let people learn from you that it's okay to talk about it and start healing. And totally. that's when I came home and I wrote the song, but I, I always dedicated it to that little girl. Mm -hmm. And years of doing these talks and even having guys like uh, Kim Coates do a, a video for me that I could show to the students. And all I would do is I would just tell them, try to inspire them to do something different, uh, different with their lives. And bullying is not the answer. And I said, with bullying, I just find because even in the music industry, I think every one of us has gone or seen something like that with what we do because we're different. There's something different about the musicians when they're on stage or they get the attention that this guy doesn't get and you're going to get bullied. Uh, totally. But it even goes back even farther than that. So all I say is just to the bullies, it's just a it's it, it's a cowardly act to, to do stuff like that. And you should, you know, you never know who you're actually talking to or what, what you're hurting, even by words. Yeah. Words, words, words can really hurt kids. Going through, you know, back to my daughter when she was six years old, she was bullied at school, and we had no clue this was happening. But it broke my heart when I dropped her off one day at school, and she pulls out two little dolls. She'd have them on the bus, and I kind of snuck up. I drove up on the side just to see how the school was going and what was happening. She got off the school bus and was running in the playground trying to get somebody to play with her, and she had two dolls, and nobody would play. Nobody was doing it. They just kind of ostracized her for some wow. reason. And then it got to a point where she's looking at me at six years old and says, dad, I can't wear this today. I said, why? She said, cause it makes me look chubby. And she said, they're going to tease me at school. And mm -hmm. this is me. I'm doing these school presentations and I got to deal with this with mm -hmm. my own daughter. So mm -hmm. she said, can you come do your, your bully talk at our school? I said, damn right. So I was on the phone the next day and I went and talked to the school and I told them, and I brought Juliana up to the front. And I said, if mm. you'll do this with dad, I says, I'm going to introduce you to everybody. And, you know, and so that's what I did for her. There was another little guy that used to get picked on at school all the time because they would tease him about his backpack. So I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. So give me your backpack. And I signed that backpack as big as I could. And I said, to one of my best friends. And I signed my name and I put his name on there. I said, now you got the coolest freaking backpack in the school because nobody has that. I'm the only one you're doing that I'm doing this for. And it totally changed that little kid's life. But mm -hmm. if I could reach even one and it finally happened when I had a, one of the presentations I was doing, I had a girl come to me and say that all the talks you did, she said, I remember you did a talk for me when I was 11 years old. She said, I'm now 16 about to graduate high school. That talk you gave me back then changed my life. Wow. And I got a tear in my eye and I grabbed her and gave her a hug. I said, I've been waiting for you. You're the mm -hmm. one. You're the mm -hmm. one I'm waiting for. I just wanted to hear that. 
you know that's so amazing a good thing so being in the position we are as musicians and to be able to give back something anything just to give back to humanity to make something mm -hmm. better hell for yeah. what we've been given in our lifetime to have the skill and the gift of playing music and travel the world to give something back like that's pretty damn cool absolutely well yeah. the uh the comments are lighting up right now they really people, are yeah people are um resonating with this they have their own stories i'm i'm sure even in this this panel you know of people that uh took is you know there's probably stories of being bullied and whatnot well it's a fascinating thing isn't it because the reality is i mean you know any form of abuse and abusers are usually you know it's some sort of like you said it's a cowardly act because people feel bad about themselves so they take it out on other people or mm -hmm. and there's that sort of weird tribalism that goes on when people sort of like you know we kind of get into a group and then we become really crappy to other people it doesn't make any sense to me so i was always like when we talked about earlier about you know sports and stuff like that which was always funny to me when it was like you know you're from a town and then there's another guy from another town. We can't be friends with him because our hockey teams play each other. And I was always like, that doesn't make any sense to me. It's like, he, he's mm. a really cool guy and he likes cool music or whatever. It's like, you know, yeah, but we can't hang out with him because he's, you know, from a different hockey team or something. I, I, I once you traveled as much as I'm sure, you know, with, with Donnie and, and all of us, it's like, you realize how small the world really is and mm -hmm. how much more you have in common rather than how much you do not have in common with people all over the planet. It's, Yes. If only people could see that, but unfortunately, children, especially children, don't have a real sense of things. Um, you know how much bigger life is, and and I, if anything, I've ever tried to say to a kid is like, man, this whole thing that you're going through right now, school is such a tiny part of your life, but it is very, you know, but like anybody, when you're going through it on a day by day basis, mm -hmm. it's everything. So, and that, that, you know. That thing Todd you're exactly right because yeah, even my one. daughter now my daughter now who's turning 13 she got involved in music and what what happened with her last year when COVID hit uh unfortunately in February she was diagnosed with diabetes mm. oh. so we had to deal with that and once that had hit dealing with the insulin and all, all of the stuff going on then all of a sudden COVID hits and now the sure. school gets shut down so mm. she went through one hell of a roller coaster ride last year and the godsend for her was during the month of November, I believe it was, she met her little friend. And this, my daughter's name's Juliana, and one of her best friends is uh, Morgan. And so Morgan ended up, they had something in common. They weren't really sure what it even was, and it's music. And oh man, like my, my daughter started playing, she's left-handed, started playing guitar like crazy and just taught herself. She wouldn't take nothing from me. And I'd say, Juliana, you need help? Nope, I'm going to do this on my own, Dad. I want to do it on my own. I said, okay, good. Good for you. And she started writing songs. Wow. Uh, she she learned, taught herself how to play ukulele. Wow. And with Morgan, Morgan plays drums. She plays guitar and uh, sings. And they both sing. They both write songs together. And I looked at both of them and I said, you two are going to be in a band together. I can see it. I can visually see it. You two will be in a band together. I could see you walking into a club and say, we're the band. <laughs> You're going to be like Joan Jett and the Runaways. So anyway, fast forward, they're watching a show. And I don't know how they got wind of this, this movie, but they got to watch The Dirt. And they uh -oh. are the most huge <laughs> Motley Crue fans right now than you can imagine. They, they wear leather jackets to school. They both have the black hair. And they, and they don't care. They got it all spiked up, and they'll go to school that way. And they're very individual, and I love them both for that. And That's great. The thing, when I had told them and showed them the video of you guys, and I said, you know, Juliana, Dad's going to talk to these guys. And I said, I know them. And I said, these two guys play for Slash. They said, get out of here. And Morgan is a huge Slash fan. Oh, wow. wow. Anyway, so I had told them all of this stuff, and Ju they're just wigging out that I'm even doing this. But <laughs> it's, uh, it's Morgan's birthday this weekend. Oh, and we're actually heading to uh, to Moose Jaw. We're gonna we're gonna go Moose Jaw and go hang out for the weekend, and it's Morgan's birthday. So I know Morgan will see this, but if you guys can do me something, can you say happy birthday to Morgan for me? Absolutely, happy sure. birthday, Morgan! Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Morgan! Morgan. That's exciting! Wow, she, she's it is that. it is funny that you bring that up because a lot of artist types, you know, musicians and stuff like that. A lot of them actually are people who didn't fit in and, you know, like the Kurt Cobains of the world or whoever you want to say. 
And, you know, and it's weird that, and it's really weird for musicians when they suddenly have um, people saying how great they are, how wonderful they are. I want to be like you. And it's like, but I grew up, you know, ostracized and picked on and all that kind of stuff. So it is kind of an interesting thing how, you know, it's, it's this, uh, you know, the outsider type effect often can produce amazing things, but it really it's really a shame that it has to happen at all. It almost feels like you know, by the time that person is accepted, you know, they, they, it's almost what made them so different is, is what they're being accepted for now in a weird way. Well, you it's know, just unfortunate, you know? It is. And the, the one thing I was very proud of is the, the other night we just went out to a restaurant because we're allowed to do that now here. We can right. go to a restaurant. And so all six of us went out. We went with myself, my wife, Patty, and Juliana, and, and Morgan, and her mom and dad. Uh, so we ended up going over to this restaurant we walk in but before we go the dad looks at looks at morgan and says we can't you can't go out like that because she had her hair all spiked up and juliana had it all spiked up they're wearing the leather jackets and they're all in black they got the chains because that's what that's their appearance so we go and we sit down and we have dinner together and we're leaving and i remember looking and i was the last one leaving behind juliana and morgan and there was a little group of girls little blonde headed girls around the same age that started laughing at them as they were walking out uh -huh. and I thought, do I stop? Do I say anything or just ignore it or keep walking? And I thought, no, let them see how they're going to respond. So we walked outside and I just said to him, I said, did that hurt you guys' feelings anyway? She said, what, those girls laughing at us? Hell no. They're, they're going to be buying our tickets to come see our show next year. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so that made me feel good because you know what? Be yourself, identify yeah. with who you are and just anybody yeah. out there listening, I mean, be yourself, you know, and just be happy with who you are. Because when you find that inner happiness that you can be, you're going to spread that around to everybody. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And that's why mm. I, I wish them all the best. Mm. Yeah. You're a good man, Donnie Parento. Uh, Donnie, these have been great stories. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate you spending some time telling us all about that stuff and making that footage available of Kenny. It's always great to see that, that footage, that, you know, lost footage of of Kenny and right. it's great that you put it together and recorded that stuff with him. And I mean, he sounds exactly the same. He, his voice has never changed over time. The fact that you guys recorded the same key, it's just, it's magic. Well, you know, it, it, it was really cool. It, it, it was very magical in the studio to be with him and to uh, even while I was still recording and recording some of my material, Kenny hung out for a couple of days and listened to some of my stuff and would help me even with some of the harmonies and say, try this or try cool. that. He was just like that. And, and the coolest thing was, is when it was all said and done, Kenny released his solo project. When Kenny's solo album came out, he reached out to me and said, Donnie boy, I need you to come to Saskatoon. Meet me at Bart's. Can you come on Wednesday? And I said, yeah. What do you need? He said, bring your fiddle and mandolin. And it was <laughs> a DVD's cover that Kenny did that he had me put fiddle and mandolin on. So I played on Kenny's solo project. Yeah. Oh, which is amazing. Was really cool. Well, you've made a lot of fans here today. A lot of new fans. And you can look at the comments. Uh, there's, you know, way too many to put up, but everybody's totally like digging, digging your stories and, you know, all the, the bully talk that we're, we're speaking of. It's, uh, by the it's way, powerful. How your daughter's Juliana and Kenny's daughter is Julia. Yes. Mm. And mm. I, I actually talked with Julia. I reached out to Julia today and, uh, she's not going to be able to see the live portion of this show, but she wants me to send a copy to her. So, hi, Julia. How old is, how old is Julia now? Uh, I'd be guessing if I told you. Brent, would you know? Yeah. She would she's be... She's a grown-up now. I know that, yeah. Yeah, 20s for sure. Yeah. Um, I've known Julia since she was a little lady when uh, in Winnipeg. And I think it's, Julia... Is I've, I've known Brent since he was a little lady. So, that was... I'm <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The bullying. I got my Dang, ass. Now I'm bullying Brent. That was me kidding. I was kidding. Yeah. I can just. Say that. I used to have gigs in my teens. Look, everybody on the panel here played at a very young age. We were very mm -hmm. fortunate to be in our teens. We're talking, you know, 15, 16 playing shows. But yes, in the day, it was the mid 80s, and I, I would go out and do gigs on the weekends. Everybody'd be hanging out at 7-Eleven doing stupid stuff, and I was busy playing in my band, and you know. Basically working and making a living. Anyway, we wore a lot of stage makeup and our hair was, you know, looked like it looked like 
flock of seagulls or whatever. But I got my ass beaten up so many times at school just because I looked like. By the, the way, and I have apologized for that time and again. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. No, yeah. yeah, I know. Same thing, dude. It's like that's. I mean, Everybody when, that when I hear you talk about your kids, Donnie, it's like it was almost like a badge of honor to be wearing crazy clothes and looking totally outside and knowing that, you know, there's a good chance that if I go into Tim Hortons, there's going to be a lot of hard dudes who are not going to be too down with the way I look. But we, mm -hmm. you know, we knew that that's what it was, and you kind of chose. I chose to be an outsider in our own way because. What ends up happening is you're a tall, gawky, skinny guy, and then you just eventually just go, well, I'm just going to commit full on. I'm just going to be the completely, you know, I'm Joey Ramone now. Like, you know, mm -hmm. but that's part of, uh, yeah, it's part of the unfortunate thing that goes along with, you know, like you said, a bunch of guys wearing eyeliner and, and nail polish playing rock and roll in Saskatchewan. It's like, well, that's not advised, but that's what we did. Yeah. It's just like the Bob Seger song, Turn the Page. It's the same right. Exactly. It's the same story that that that's that song was written for all musicians exactly all that are different first time when i had met neil mccoy i showed up and he says uh what 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 do you wear i said what do you mean what do i wear it's just for on stage and i said is it oh because i didn't have the starch wranglers and starch shirts or anything like hell i had no freaking money right so I up and i showed him these pair of boots that i used to always wear on stage and they're like mucklucks and i said okay these are mucklucks and they're white and i said and i usually wear these on stage he looked at me and says not on my stage you're not <laughs> <laughs> if your ass is going to the cowboy store and you get some cowboy boots, that's awesome. <laughs> so I had to get cowboy boots, starch jeans, and Wrangler shirts, and okay, whatever. Play the of game. Of course, yeah, that yeah. was the thing. Yeah, it's and the, the mullets, bit. the mullets were big back then. That's yes, right. came out, man, in the nineties, and I'll tell you, we all had to grow our hair. And the trick was just to grow your hair long enough, you could wear a baseball cap, stick your hair through the back. There you go. And man, I used to have, and I got a perm in my hair, and I used to always flip my hair sideways, and I'd spray it before I walked out to look cool before you get on stage. <laughs> what, they after, what they did to me, they put Seven Up in my water bottle. Oh! I walked on stage, and I went and flipped my hair sideways and sprayed it. Didn't realize. <laughs> walked out. It's like you get on stage, you start sweating, and you're going, "Oh, what's wrong with my hair?" Oh no! <laughs> Amazing. Uh, uh, we had some good times. So yeah absolutely that's awesome this has been a good time oh yep. make sure you guys go pick up the uh, or check out the uh snow white video it's on youtube it's i went all over on all yeah. your music places you can find that song donnie paranto i appreciate yeah, it Kenny and, yeah. and, and definitely right you know right back at you guys i mean just I, i'm so i'm just honored to be here you know it's like oh. a, i just i just feel like i said before i walked out on stage you know between george and and uh Kenny was the one that did all this and brought mm -hmm. us together. And, and I'm so grateful because. And I, he's I still, still bringing people together, isn't he? Bringing people yeah. together. And yeah. I, I can't wait for the guys that you're able to come up to Canada and I can come and see you. And Absolutely. Come show and come watch you guys and bring my daughter and her friend because they can't wait to meet you guys. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, hopefully it's we'll be deal. in Saskatchewan oh, sooner than yeah. later. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope so. Edmonton first. Edmonton first, apparently. Edmonton's it's coming first. Yeah. That's, that's July or August, is it? August 14th. August. Okay. Yeah. With Prism and Tom Cochran, uh, Tom Cochran and Red Rider. So I guess right. he's kind of doing the Red Rider thing for that. Yeah. Hmm. It doesn't get much more Canadian than that. Red no. Rider and, and Prism and two. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Very good. Right on, guys. Donnie, awesome, thank you so man. much thank for your time. You so Everybody yeah. in the audience, it's thank good. you for okay. joining us. You guys are awesome. And um, we'll do the same thing again next week. Same so, two time, same same two channel. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Stay well, guys. Thanks, Donnie. Take care. Yeah, take, take care. Thanks, Donnie. Yeah, take take care. Love. Hey, bud. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Two time. <laughs> <laughs>